Hey guys, back with another Supercoach video, and what a round of Supercoach it was. Scored 2,313, best score of the year so far, putting me in the top 2%, and I moved up 5,334 spots, moving me up to just outside the top 10,000, which I'm really happy about, and to put the icing on the cake, I won all four league matchups, so that's good to see. In defense, I'm really happy with my premium defenders in particular. Laird and Adams, both with 110, they just continue to perform and continue to score well. Dylan Robertson with the 119, really good stuff. Same with Zach Tui, 116. So I'm just really happy with all my premiums in defense. Caleb Marchbank, only the 61, and his break evens up to a 98. And, oh, I think it's a 98 at least, somewhere in the high 90, 90s. So, it's probably time for him to go. Nick Newman with the 93, he's going to continue to make good cash. And, well, hopefully he continues to score well as a bonus. Anyway, Tom Stewart with only the 52, but because I've got to attend to Marchbank and my forward line, I'm going to have to hold him, even though he's break evens at a 54. Jared Berry is 75, and he's starting to score really well and make good cash, just like Newman. Obviously not as much as Newman, you can't really beat the 151, but anyway, on to the mids. Tom Mitchell, 158 and 50 touches, just an unbelievable game from him against the Pies. There was a bit of criticism, however, about those 50 touches, whether it was just stat padding, him getting stats, just for the sake of it. But... What I have to say about this is he played his role and he played it really well. And also, Shorty say covers Tommy Mitchell's 50 touches, and I completely agree with what Shorty has to say about it. Anyway, on to Paddy Dangerfield with the 151. I guess his first half really set the tone for what he was going to do and what he was going to score that night. And there you go, the 151, just brilliant stuff from him. And Scotty Pendlebury, 142. A big last quarter from him against the Hawks, scored a big goal as well, and that definitely boosted his score. So just great stuff from Pendles. Joel Selwood had the vice on him, 126. Kind of regret not putting on Paddy Dangerfield or, you know, Tommy Mitchell or Pendlebury, but I'll take the 126, definitely. It's a guarantee 252, so that's still pretty good. And Josh Kennedy with the 102. He turned up, but... I would like to see a little more out of him. Nat Fife hasn't turned up for a few weeks and is a little worrying, but it's definitely not something I really need to attend to. Like They're not poor scores, but you'd definitely like to see more from him. Paddy Cripps with only the 94. And I, th I saw, I think he, um, he landed awkwardly in a marking contest. And... Messed up the knee a little bit. A bit, a bit of a niggle in the knee, and I think he should be right to go anyway. That's what I heard. So, the 94, not great, but I think he should bounce back. I think he'll be right to go against North. Jake Barrett, an 87. You love seeing that from your rookies, and he's definitely got more money to make in the coming weeks. So, good stuff from Barrett. David Myers with a 60, and you now he's there to make some pretty good cash. Hopefully he can score a little better than the 60. But yeah, we'll take that. And onto the rocks. Brody Grundy with a 92. We definitely want to see a little more from him. They're not poor scores. But yeah, we definitely know he's got he's got a higher ceiling than just the 90s. And Toby Nankervis with the exact ton. That's good stuff from him. He's continuing to score well. Onto the forward line, by far the poorest line in this current side. Dalhouse and McRae, 90 and 84. For a side that, first of all, lost and had a little bit of trouble for about half the game because there were plenty of momentum swings. I guess the 90 and 84 are respectable scores from them. So I guess we'll take that. Jack Steele, an 87. Take that from him. I feel like he deserved a little more, but... Yeah, we'll definitely take an 87, like I said. Isaac Heaney, a 69. Much quieter game from him. Hopefully he bounces back against the Hawks. James Parsons, 47. He 
just beat his break even. Now he's break even's lowered, so that's good to see. And James Stewart brought him in instead of having McNeese because he didn't get named. And he scored the 51. And hopefully he keeps his spot. I think he should. And he's got some good money to make off the first price rise with the 91, but hopefully he shows some good signs against the Tigers. So, yeah, just hoping for good stuff from the rookies. But, yeah, that's the team from round 9. Generated the best score of the year so far, obviously. But on to trades. Let's see. Let's just sort out the team. First, I'll probably give the vice to Dangerfield and Pendles. Nothing, nothing too out there anymore. Just going back to the regulars because I feel confident that they are back. So let's see what else. Marchbank will have to go, so I'll just put him on the bench for now. There we go. And Pal Pepper plays on Thursday, so we'll. Get two bites of the cherry, see how Pal Pepper goes against the Cats, and if not, we'll probably stick with Barrett or Myers as scores. And let's see, Parsons, we can bring him back to the bench. So in regards to trading, let's let's see. I do value cash a lot right now. And with the plan that I have in regards to trading, we got March Bank and where is he? Oh no, I forgot. Jeez. There we go. So March Bank and then Butler. Out Butler is most likely going to leak cash. I don't know if he'll beat the 70 break even. I think it is. That he currently has. And I can trade in any forward at this rate. But I do value cash right now, so I, I could get in Yo, but I won't. Let's see, who is there? Like, obviously, I make these trades at this point, even though teams haven't been released. I make these trades just so you guys can see what my team could potentially look like. Obviously, I will reverse if certain players don't get named that I trade in, such as McNeese last week, or the last two weeks, I think. But, yeah, how much do I cash do I have now? I definitely have enough for all forwards. Like I said, 687k. I can get in anyone that I decide here, but I'll go with Toby Green. This is the guy I had in mind. Gives me 189 in the bank. If O'Connor doesn't get named, I'll most likely go with Perryman. I don't know. There's not many good downgrade targets. But like, it's, it's Greenwood, Chai Bolton, but I need to attend to my forward line in terms of upgrading because that is by far my weakest weakest line. So might as well attend to it now, bolster up my forward line. So yeah, this will be my round 10 team. Once again, the trades, March Bank to O'Connor and Butler up to Toby Green. So the last thing I'll probably touch on is leagues. So let's just move to game day. Got Robbo this week, so that should be pretty interesting. But last week, I beat Owen. So Owen, if you're watching, good game, mate. And in Shorty Supercoach League, got Josh this week. But last week, I beat Tyler. By just under 100 there, by 71. So, good stuff. I've, I'm starting to move up in Shorty's league. Up to 8th spot, 4 and 3. Starting to get the wins. So, hopefully I can see more of that in the coming weeks. So, it's good stuff. So, yeah, once again, this is my team for round 10. Barring any team changes tonight and in the coming nights. Yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.